Apparently, you'll need some help understanding a little bit more about what the jewel is, and that's totally fine. The jewel itself is simply a measurement of heat and energy. Heat and energy. It's very simple. Now, there is a fancy description to this whole thing, and I will elaborate on it uh, just to give you some sort of idea of uh, what the official definition is. This is, uh, the jewel is exactly what's called one newton, and that's named after Sir Isaac Newton, one newton of force placed over one meter of length. And I know, it's, it sounds rather bizarre, but one newton of force over the distance of one meter. Uh, there's another way to describe it, and that would be like um, the use of the term like watts. For example, you've probably heard that your microwave is 1,200 watts, or your um, hair dryer is 800 watts, or something along those lines, or a 60-watt light bulb. So in this case, a joule can also be defined as one watt of power and that's uh, exhausted over one second. So there's sort of ability here to define what one unit is using other units to give you an idea of what it is exactly that it, uh, that type of force is. Now, uh, let me give you a couple of other examples of what a joule is. For example, if you have, let's say, a two liter bottle of soda, and this is a very poorly <laughs> written, two liter bottle so let's say it's three fourths quarters full with soda uh, the area the amount of pressure exerted by the carbon dioxide gas in that two liter bottle of soda um, the pressure on the outside container that is exactly one joule of force um, for example we can also say that if you had a one let's say square decimeter and that's one tenth of a meter so it's like ten centimeters. If you had a 10 centimeter square um, piece of uh, surface and the sunlight was coming down on it, then that right there would be one joule of energy. Um, think of it like this. You can think of it this way too. Will not, because this thing will not move. Here we go. You can think of it this way as well. This would be like, and I'm going to draw a very terrible football a joule would be roughly the same as lifting a football um, approximately 1.1 meters off the ground. So if this were the ground and you lifted the football 1.1 meters off the ground, you will have existed and exerted one joule of energy. Now, the joule itself is a relatively small unit. It's used to describe small things. Now, if we wanted to make a larger comparison than just one joule, we might put a prefix on it, something like kilo. The prefix kilo, as you probably already know, is a thousand of something. So in this case, if you had a kilo, like a kilojoule, that's 1,000 joules. Now, these prefixes, they change. For example, we can make it even bigger and put the prefix mega. This would be the megajoule and that is equivalent to one million joules and we can make it even bigger a billion a billion joules has the prefix as you probably have heard this before giga so a giga joule would be a billion joules so it increases by a thousand times from there to make here, and it also an increase of a thousand times from kilo to mega, mega to giga. And as far as we're concerned, we're going to go one step larger. And because when we're talking about calderas, we're talking about enormous amounts of energy. So the terajoule is a thousand times larger than a gigajoule, and that is one trillion joules that's a lot of joules a lot of energy so now that you understand basically what the unit of a joule is and how to use metric prefixes to figure out how big they are in comparison to one another i think you're ready to go